Good morning, Coach. Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> I wanted to ask, um, I saw that Thomas was out of the walking boot on Saturday. Will he be available this week or do you have a timetable for his return to the uh, rotation? You know, uh, Jonas, I just left the training room and he was down there. He's doing better, but I have no idea uh, when he will be available. I joke with him and ask him, was he going to be available for Wednesday? And he said, I hope so, but I don't have a timetable at all. I actually haven't spoken to the, the trainer. The train was running around. We had to get COVID tested this morning. And so I've only talked to Thomas, but he's in a better place. Uh, but he hasn't did anything on the floor or any type of shooting or any type of cutting at this moment. Uh, James Henderson, go ahead. Hey, Kevin, hope you're doing well. Um, these two week, these two games this past week, both games you shot over 50% from the field. Just having a chance to watch those games back, was there anything you noticed that, that led to the, those shooting performances that maybe carried over from one to the next? Yeah, James, I thought our, I thought our ball movement was great, um, and I thought we played inside and out. Uh, and for the first time, I thought we got out in transition, which obviously if you can get some easy baskets in transition, then you're going to have a shoot a better percentage from the field. But I just thought the ball didn't stick. I thought everybody, you know, played very unselfish basketball. We moved the ball. We got some good action. And then a lot of some of it is, you know, contributed to when you look at the Wake Forest game, we were able to get 28 points off of just our defense and turnovers. And so, so a lot of it had something to do with the 50 percent. Uh, Justin Williams, go ahead. Coach, it seems like your freshman guards have really shown some growth over the past two games. I'm just curious from your perspective, when it comes to the development of freshmen, how much of it is just gaining confidence throughout the season and how much of it is learning tangible things about playing at the ACC level and how much of it, how much of those two things are weighing into the performance of your freshman guards recently? I think it's both, um, you know, obviously, you know, in order to advance as a freshman, because they're coming in playing high school and AAU basketball, you have to be able to get out on the floor and get some actual playing time and some actual really tough games. So I think that's part of the reason. The other part of it is just, um, you know, in practice, we've drilled with them the things that we need them to get better on, uh, you know, obviously taking care of the basketball, being consistent, a lot of times, um, you know, when I go back and watch tape, a freshman will just stand around instead of on all dribble penetration and stuff, instead of sprinting to spots. Um, they don't know what they don't know, so they don't know how to play hard for 40 minutes. They think that, you know, a lot of times they think that they are playing hard, but when you have to show them, they, then they understand that. So I think it's a combination of a lot of things. They, their ability to get in more games and be able to play and make some mistakes but also we've used practice as kind of a, you know, I've went to more trying to get a few segments of three or four minute scrimmage like deals so they can make some of those mistakes in practice and kind of see how it feels like when they get into a game. Thank you. Ben Conlon, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I wanted to ask about Helms. I think he had 23 points the first time against Virginia. I was curious where you've seen him grow this year compared to years prior. It seems like his his shooting percentage all across the board is up and, and rebounding and all those numbers. Yeah, you know, he's the type of kid you want in your program and, and you want to make sure your program is going in the right direction. So when you take him from freshman year and the jump he made from freshman year to sophomore year, then sophomore year to junior year, he's been effective. He's the one guy that I think um, took some responsibility in. Hey, uh, this team needs me to be a little bit more aggressive. I need to rebound more, taking up some slack from Devin and also being able to score the basketball. So the maturity that he's uh, shown over the last few weeks or a month or so has been incredible for us because he's done it both in the locker room, on the court, and then in his play in ACC play. And that's what you want. You know, you want guys that continue to get better. You know, he and I was joking about, um, you know, his freshman year, he couldn't guard anybody. And now, you know, he's one of our better on the ball defenders. And so I think it's just a, a product of a young man who's put a lot of work in and the system has done a good job of helping him get there. Andrew Schnitker, go ahead. Devin, you talked about Darion and his size and wanting him to play tougher and more aggressive after the last game. Does having him in the lineup and playing the way that he's been able to play for you guys the last couple of days almost give you a different element to your lineups that you haven't had? previously well it gives us Andrew 
you know, we're, we're, you know, in the past, we've always had bigger wings. You know, when I say bigger, I'm saying six, four, six, five. And, you know, when we had CJ Bryce and Devin Daniels and those guys, well, we don't have, when Devin went down this year, we didn't have that guy. And those guys have always been our, you know, really, if you look at it, kind of even going back to Torin Dorn, who was kind of a three, four, those guys are other guys who really have always led us in rebounding. And those are the guys who always been great in transition. They were guard the best players on the floor. And, you know, what we need from him is to play, not exactly like those guys, but we need to, him to play with some toughness, um, athletic ability and his size. So it has helped us because we've been able to put a bigger guard on the floor than we would normally have uh, without Devin Daniels. So it's made a difference a little bit more on the defensive end. You know, when you look at the pitch game, the pit game at the end of the game, instead of having three guys who are, you know, the tallest guy, 6'2 or 6'3, we were able to sub him in on the defensive end to have make a difference because he was a bigger guard. Mike Barber, go ahead. Coach, looking at this, uh, um, Sam Hauser, what are the challenges he presents in a matchup? And, and obviously you're not that far removed from facing him. <laughs> Well, he just, I mean, he's a tough matchup. You know, anytime you got a guy who shoots the ball as effective as he does and his ability to score around the basket, he moves well without the basketball. Uh, if he's a smaller guy, he has the ability to shoot over him. If it's a taller guy, he has the ability to put the ball on the floor. You know, when you look at them, you know, their guards are very capable of making shots. But the strength of their outside shooting is coming right now this year from their three, four, and five. And Hauser's a big, um, you know, he makes tough shots. And, you know, some shots that people would say they're bad shots, they're not bad shots for him, they're good shots, and he makes them. And so that's the biggest problem is, you know, who do you put on him? Uh, you know, with us, we switch a lot of screens, and so we give him a lot of different looks, but he's able to expose a lot of different people. And then a similar question with, with Jay Huff, plus the added dimension of, you know, being a seven-foot rim protector. What, what's tough about that matchup? Well, very seldom do you play against pick and pop fives. And, you know, when they get you on a naked pick and roll and cut guys through and, you know, he's able to step out and make threes, you know, it's you're almost at his mercy that hoping that he's not having a great night shooting the basketball. But, you know, he's so much more than a three-point shooter, but that's a, that's a weapon of his game. But, you know, his ability, he's, he's long, he's athletic, um, you know, he's great around the rim, good touch. You know, and those guys, and he, and he gives you some problems with your post guys because you got to shoot, you got to be able to shoot on to, over top of him, and he's got great size. And so those guys are tough matchups. Um, you know, it's a few guys in our league. You know, when you talk about Huff and, and you talk about uh, Matthew Hurt and, um, you know, those type of guys because they can pick and pop, they can score inside and out. And that's always a tough matchup for anybody. Thank you. Kevin, that's all the time I have for you today. Thank you. We appreciate it. See you next week. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay. Well,